Welcome back to Schroeder TV. My name is Bob Beirig. I'm the Applications Engineer for the Schroeder Industries Filter Systems Product Group. And this video will be the first of and the introductory video for a five-part video series on a topic that is uh, fundamental to the success of many hydraulic fluid power and lubrication system asset managers. And that would be fluid contamination control. Before I forget, be sure to like this video, and for those who haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button to get early access to all of Schroeder TV content and, of course, the latest videos. Why does fluid contamination matter? According to many resources, fluid contamination is typically cited to account for between 70 to 80% of unexpected hydraulic fluid power and lubrication system failures. And in many ways, fluid contamination control is relatively low hanging fruit in terms of improving energy and resource efficiency, process reliability, and system availability. The main four types of hydraulic and lubrication fluid contaminants are solid particle contamination, liquid or water contamination, gaseous or air contamination, and gel-like contamination, which is most often associated with oil degradation products, otherwise generically known as varnish. And the source of these contaminants can be from without or within a system or as a byproduct of each other. So let's dive into that a level further, if you will. Contamination can be built into assemblies from the assembly process or from the individual components that weren't sufficiently cleaned prior to assembly. Contamination can also be drawn into the fluid from the external environment, which is commonly referred to as ingression. Additionally, normal and abnormal wear of components are also vehicles for internal generation of contamination. Or consider so-called new fluid. In many cases, new fluid, especially from metallic drums, can be contaminated right from the get-go, unless it has been certified clean from an oil supplier. And last but not least, contamination can occur as a byproduct of other contaminants like I had previously mentioned. But let's talk about a few examples. Particle contamination can lead to worn sealing surfaces and surfaces that cause leaking points for external air and moisture ingression, and can also lead to friction-induced localized thermal degradation of the fluid. Water contamination, on the other hand, can accelerate the fluid aging process and can further contribute to the generation of varnish or cause corrosive pitting to metallic components, and therefore internally generate solid metallic particle contamination. Air contamination, for instance, can cause cavitation and dieseling effects, which may also lead to uh, additional particle contamination and local thermal fluid degradation. And finally, an example for varnish or oil degradation byproducts, varnish can be a root cause of further accelerated fluid aging and as well as increased particle generation through changing in inadequate lubrication properties, as well as the formation of water from chemical reactions. So as you can see, just from these few examples of the various byproducts from different types of contaminants, it really is kind of like a domino effect. One in controlled form of these contaminants can lead to the, the generation, the ingression of other types of contaminants and can become kind of a, this compound uncontrolled contamination problem. So for this video, that's where we're going to end it. Like I had mentioned, the subsequent videos will provide deeper technical context to each four of these uh, types of contaminants. But for now, please leave us a comment in the comment section of this video if there are any additional fluid conditioning and or condition monitoring topics you would be interested in. And of course, any feedback to help improve our video resources. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that at least it'll be a useful resource for you in the future. Bye for now.